Okay. All right, so now we're into what we're calling livestock movements, which I guess is what we're talking about, births, sales, purchases, and deaths, and, and use. So we're, yep. we're um, yeah, again, this should be all information that's in your financial statements, because it's animals you've bought or sold, plus what you um, tailed, docked, whatever you call it, that, that, or, or uh, weaned. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so we've, with the layout of this, we've um, of this page here, you can see we've mirrored it to align with some of the other tools that uh, are used in the industry, so that if you have them, it'll be quite straightforward. We um, an important thing to note, and we talked about this earlier um, in in one of the earlier videos, is that the aging up. So if you have a June balance date everything gets aged up to hot, all your lambs will get aged up to hoggets at balance date. And so those so sold in the June to September period, essentially prime hoggets. An important thing to do is that if they get, if they start the season in a livestock class and they need to be sold in the same one. Mm. The main thing that'll catch you out will be the losses which are calculated down here. And we'll come to that in a minute. But the key, th I think, just want to expand on that point. So. The accountant will put, um, people. a farmer may consider them winter lambs sold in August, for example, but in the accounts, and in here, they need to be put down as hoggets, because yes. they've gone past the balance date. So cool. it's, it's a descriptor, it's not what you may see on farm, you may still call them lambs, their teeth haven't erupted, but for transactional purposes, for financial statements, that's where they, they should go in this system. It tells us how long they've been on the farm, more or less. Correct. And you can divvy them up if you know into store or, or prime sales. Um, how big a difference does this make if people aren't sure? Yeah, there there isn't a huge difference, um, particularly you know if you're looking at, at whether you sold your lambs, store or prime. But it's I suppose it's an incremental thing. The more information yep. you have, the more um, the better information yep. you have about your uh, business. Uh, Thinking about our own place, that we uh, we would not sell any mixed age use um, to store. Mm. We I knew we would buy some in, and would retain some of our own, and they'd go to our finishing box. So we knew what was happening on our business, um, and then we also because we had the other block, we sold no on our own farm. We sold no lamb store. We finished everything, so we know what, um, what bucket they would fall into. So the priorities here are to get the open and close numbers right, get the births, purchases, sales right, and then if you can, as best you can, get the store prime allocation. Um, but it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect to come up with a, a good no. accurate number. No. Oh. But yeah, good good information and good information. And again, out. checking your tallies um, at the bottom there that they align with what's in the financial statements. The one thing I'll just pick up here, and we've had a few questions about it, so adult losses 6.5%, now that's a roundabout industry benchmark. You'll notice lambs are at 0%, which is not going to happen, but often that's an artifact of financial statements. The accountant has worked how many lambs were born from how many were sold and how many are on hand at the end and said that's how many were born. Um, it's not, not the end of the earth if it's yeah. something like that. Yeah. And so we, but the reason we calculate the losses here is to help um, make sure that it's balanced. So you understand your t um, your tools. If perhaps say uh, these, um, we'll treat these as uh, winter um, winter lambs. Mm -hmm. Now say if they'd been added into here, so that we had. Oops, Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> there we go. You've actually got negative losses here because they're, oops, they've been put into the wrong uh, category. So you, they've come in as uh, lambs. Uh, sorry, they've come into the season. Yeah, these are genuine yeah. hoggets. These were hoggets at the start of the year. So some of the ewe lambs, ewe hoggets have been culled during the year by the looks of it. Yes, yeah. And they may well have been sold as a lamb because their teeth hadn't erupted. But they've got to be yeah. considered for, for analysis pro yeah. as hoggets and the, and the wee error message should flick up and tell yeah. you if you've got that wrong. So. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's just a, a, a just a little check. Right, and same thing for 
Hero. So yeah, we come down to our And again, if you're out an animal or two here or there, it's, it's not the end of the world, but the tallies, as you'll see, are updating at the bottom. You can always just check against your financial statements and make sure you got it right. Cattle in particular, I've found, um, looking at financial statements, are one where sometimes the accountants um, can put animals together, heifer sales or steer sales, for example, rather than having them accurately split out by R1, R2, or even R3, so that's one that sometimes you'll just need to, to check. It'll throw up an error message if you're trying to sell too many of that class, basically, which would mean some of them need to be split out and put into another class. Yeah, but that, that's part of the design with this is that um, the adults are lumped together because that tends to be where it occurs, and it's just the calves and weaners that you're, that you're separating out. Yeah. And again, just um, we artifact there, zero calf or weaner deaths, which again doesn't happen but it's because the accountant has worked that number born out of how many are on hand at 30th of June and how many were sold.